I'd say the the um, biggest piece of advice that I can give to every artist and the number one thing that every independent artist uh, should think about and and this is this is at any stage of their career this is if you're just getting started or if you've been if you have five albums out you have to set your goals and because like you said earlier everyone functions differently and everyone um, we, we are living in this beautiful time in the music industry where it is a virtually a level playing field. No one needs to give you permission to run a music career. You can run a music career on your own yourself. You have all the tools there. Now, that being said, yes, we have the freedom to do it, but it is incredibly daunting because there are so many avenues to pursue. And I talk about a few of them in the Fender Playbook, and I outline uh, some ways that people are finding success today. Um, but you know, with with TikTok or live streaming or, or all of that stuff and the release strategy. But the thing is, is I only outlined a few. There are literally as many ways to make a music career happen today as there are musicians. That has never happened that way before in the history of the music industry, and that's really inspiring and encouraging and but also really daunting because it's like well where do you begin what do you so people come to me all the time and they say all right all right i got this great album what should i do i was like i have no idea what you should do because i don't know who you are i don't know what inspires you i don't know what you're good at i don't know what your strengths and weaknesses are but more most of all i don't know what your goals are what do you want because that is the biggest thing there are some people who just want to make music at home and they don't they're afraid to play shows they don't want to play shows so giving them advice oh you got to go on tour that's an awful piece of advice because i don't know what they want there's other people who are the greatest live performers you'll ever see and they hate TikTok, and it it nauseates them to even think about it so tell, telling them you have to be on TikTok is the worst piece of advice you could give them. So you have to know the artist and what inspires you. So if you're listening to this, what I would encourage you to do is to make concrete goals. Now I call them, well, it's not just, if this isn't my thing, this is um, this is the thing out there, but it's, it's SMART goals and, and SMART stands for um, specific, um, it, it stands for specific, measurable, the M, uh, achievable, realistic, and time bound. So you, you don't want to just say like, oh, my goal is I want to have a music career or I want to make a bunch of money with me. That, that's not specific. That's not really measurable. It's not achievable. I mean, it might be achievable, but you have no idea what that means. And it's not time bound. So like a specific, a smart goal that I talk about is, um, you know, I want to get a, a song placed in a TV show in six months that's specific you know exactly what it is you know how it can be achieved can be realistic time bound six months you have to set these very specific goals i want to sell out this venue in one year this 250 person venue in one year again that's a smart goal very specific so set up those goals and then i would encourage everyone to reevaluate your goals every six months because things change you know things evolve and you don't have to be super rigid about all this but write out these goals, but don't just, don't just write them in your computer. I encourage you, if you're going to use a computer, write it, print that sheet out, put it on your wall, you know, let's like tack it into the wall, put it in your studio wall, your office wall, your bedroom wall, wherever, make it a physical representation of your future of what you are working towards. So you can look at that and you can aim for it because then once you know your goals, you know how to reverse engineer it. Because he, here's the, here's the reason that most musicians fail. It is because they try one thing. It doesn't work for them the first time and they give up on that one thing. And they're like, well, this doesn't work. So then they move on to something else because someone's like, oh, you should try Twitch. Twitch is so hot right now. So they live stream on Twitch. Nobody shows up to their live stream like Twitch sucks. Twitch doesn't work. It couldn't work for me. No, it doesn't work for me. It's like, okay. Now, if you had set a goal that in six months, you want to be making $2,000 a month on Twitch, you wouldn't give up the first time you tried Twitch because there are a hundred steps to get to that goal of six months, $2,000 a month on Twitch. And I guarantee you, if you make that goal 
and you work at it every day, you'll reach that goal because it is wildly feasible. When I had the, uh, there is a direct way that you can find revenue generating opportunities on all these platforms, Twitch being one of them, but you have to know what you're aiming for because the first 10 times you're going to try something, most likely you are going to fail, but then you learn from it. It's like, oh man, I, you know, I didn't have my camera set up properly. I was staticky. The audio was really awful. Okay, I have to figure that out. My interface wasn't working properly. All right, I have to figure that out. My OBS wasn't triggering, wasn't firing. I, so it's going to take you a lot of starting and stopping till you get to that point where you are mastering it, an expert, and then you can reach that goal. You're not going to make it. <laughs> okay, no, I'll put that differently. You're not going to blow up. You're not going to go viral. I hope you do, but you're probably not. And so one of your better strategies is probably to start small and build from there. So I think if I were an independent artist today, my approach would be to try and foster a local community around my music, first and foremost. There's no point in getting a bunch of Spotify listeners from Indonesia or Stockholm if you're based in LA, right? You want to make music in LA, your first gigs, which are going to be your highest paying thing that you ever do uh, in terms of like a Heck, you might make more from one gig than you'll ever make on streaming. They're going to be local. And so you need to have a local audience first and foremost. And it's building from there that you're really going to blow up. Uh, th there's a band that went to my high school in the early 2000s who did really well at this. They, they started local and they became so popular local that it just spread and it spread and it spread. And the band's name, they're called Thrice. So it's like sort of hardcore screamo type of stuff, which was really cool in the early 2000s. Um, but they, they did really well at this local thing and blowing up and blowing up. And of course that predates the internet a little bit, but I think, uh, I wish more independent artists knew that going local is going to have the best results possible and spreading yourself too thin across Spotify is just going to, just going to give you some vanity metrics. But at the end of the day, you're not going to be able to make a living from it. We know we are in an independent driven music industry right now and with um, over 60,000 songs distributed to Spotify every day, um, there's a lot of noise out there and you're going to want to find a way to break through that noise. And since most of us artists start off without a team, we have to figure out how are we going to uh, get the biggest bang for our buck with our release because not only are we probably not having a team we don't have a ton of money we don't have major label marketing budgets and big ad spends so um what i like to implement is the 50 50 rule um so the 50 50 rule is 50 percent of your time should be spent on the your creative endeavors your art so that is the creation of your music and that is the songwriting that's the in studio the production all of that and then 50 percent of your time your time should be spent on the business now this is business is virtually everything that's not the creative part of it typically the non-fun stuff the marketing the promotion the emailing the social media yada 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 um but it is super important and uh but this is not a daily thing nobody can do this it's not like i'm asking you to set an alarm at 2 p.m and then ding it goes off and you have to switch to the business it's not like that this is uh over the course of your entire career so um it's going to eventually even out so of course when you're in the studio and you're working um on your your new record or your songwriter or something 85 90 percent of your time is going to be spent on the art and that's cool as it should and then the other 10 to 15 percent will be spent on you know emails, social media, whatever. Then when you're ready to release that music and promote it, that will flip. And then 85, 90% of your time will be spent on the business, the promotion of that art. And then, you know, you still want to leave some time for creativity. Uh, now the 50, 50 rule is not just your time though. It's also your money. And here's the thing, because it doesn't matter whether you have a thousand dollars to spend on marketing promotion. Uh, and your art and your recording and everything, or a million dollars, this is the ratio. So what is this ratio? Break it down. 50% of your money should be spent on the art. So your recording costs, studio costs, production, your producer, your 
uh, engineer, I mean, everything that you're gonna pay for to create your music. That includes new instruments, that includes pedals, that includes whatever, guitars, everything. Um, now, 50% of your money needs to also be spent and reserved for the promotion and marketing of that art. Now, I know I'm saying this and I know people are listening to this and they're like, oh, okay, got it, got it, got it. And they're gonna price out their next record and it's gonna be like, all right, it's gonna cost me $10,000 to make my next record. So they go and raise $10,000 and when their album comes out, they have exactly $27 left over to promote it. And then they wonder why that no one is listening to it and they can't break through the noise. If your record is gonna cost $10,000 to make, how much money do you have to raise? $20,000, you have to have that marketing budget there, otherwise you're not gonna break through. So without a team, whether you have a little money, a lot of money, it doesn't matter. You're gonna have to separate your time and the money and really think about that and get very disciplined because believe me, I'm an artist. I wanna spend all my time and money on the music and the art as well. But if you do that, then you're just making music for yourself. And that's okay. If you wanna be a hobbyist, if you want to just make music for the love of making music, wonderful, bless you. There's no problems with that. But if your intention is to be a creative professional, if you wanna be a professional musician and you actually want to build a career, then you really have to hunker down until you get that team, you are the team. You have to do it yourself because there is no one out there that is going to work. Uh, no one's gonna become knocking on your door unless you're starting to make starting to make waves and show people that you are an artist worthy of a team.